guys, we got to start off the podcast today. And before we do, we want to give a shout out today to Helix Sleep. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you up to a mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Find your perfect mattress at helixsleep.com slash Funches. Guys, it's a very stressful time period out there in the world. That is just a simple fact. And you need a licensed therapist to talk to. You can't just be talking to your friends and family, unloading your problems on them. So I just want to give a quick thank you to Talkspace. As a listener of this podcast, you can get $100 off your first month of Talkspace. Thank you for supporting the Getting Better podcast with Ron Funches. And thanks to Talkspace Online Therapy, finding a therapist is easier and quicker than ever. Get matched with your perfect therapist right from your device and connect with them on your own schedule from anywhere at any time. As a listener of my Getting Better podcast, you get $100 off your first month on Talkspace by using the promo code Ron. Thank you guys for listening to Getting Better, for watching it. If you watch it on YouTube when it comes out, if you watch it as we stream the intros live on Twitch, Twitch, Ron underscore Funches is the account. You don't need to, to, to pay anything. There's no money involved. You can't follow me. You can sub if you would like to subscribe to my content where we watch uh, Comedy Night Fridays, probably my favorite night of the week, where we watch some of my favorite TV sets of people who I love. Last week, we watched what Dion Cole. Uh, we watched Taylor Tomlinson, and then we called Taylor Tomlinson. Uh, we watched some Dan Soder, and then we called Dan Soder and talked to him for a bit i think it's a real one-of-a-kind experience to get to watch some of these comedians tv sets and then call them right after and talk to them about how they felt or how they feel about comedy in general um we also just play straight up video games and as we get closer to the new systems coming out you know your boy gonna be playing that xbox series x and that ps5 so give me a follow when twitch ron underscore funches and we'll run through, you know, the ways to support the podcast. You can become a Patreon subscriber, patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. Um, and you can help us out there, be a supporter there and get such wonderful items in return, such as my love and admiration for you helping me and helping maintain this podcast. But if you like physical goods, there's also <laughs> thank you notes. There's also posters, T-shirts, uh, the, the exclusive and elusive Funch Club pin. You don't even know how to get the Funch Club pin. I won't ever tell you. But if you sub and you hang out on Patreon, if you're just a friend of mine, maybe one day it shows up in your mailbox. Um, it's just little things I like to do to consider myself the Black Willy Wonka, just like Juicy J, to have fun fun and, <laughs> and bring some lightness in the people's white world and you got oh also personal affirmations at the ten dollar level on patreon you can get your own personal affirmation sent directly to you to talk to you about what you're working on what you need help with what you need uh, a, a cheerleader or a hype man for let me be that because that's what i'm good at so again, it's patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. If you want to do some Christmas um, or holiday uh, or Hanukkah, you know, I like to I don't like to just not say Christmas because I like the Christmas, but I also don't like to leave people out. I like Hanukkah, all the holidays. And if you don't celebrate them, if you're a pagan, whatever you want to do, I believe in you, too. But if you want an affirmation in time for the holidays, I would get them in now. I uh, get them in before the first week of December so I can get them on back to you. Uh, so patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. And speaking of the holidays, we have my own Ron Funches, very Funches Christmas special coming to you December 5th from the same. If you watch the Awakening show, with Christopher Titus production company, we're doing something uh, in the same space, but completely different. There will be Christmas music, Christmas jokes, Hanukkah jokes, holiday. Is there Hanukkah? Yeah, there's Hanukkah music for sure. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I'm Made you out of clay, baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there will be just lots of fun guests. Great comedy. Great. I'm gonna. I'm gonna singing. I'm taking singing lessons as we speak. 
in order to surprise you guys with my beautiful tones. Uh, you can get tickets right now, ronfunches.com for the Christmas show. We have wonderful special guests. Jeremiah Watkins will be there. Uh, Blair will be there. The whole Mer- 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 Marauder crew will be there and other special guests. So please get tickets right now. RonFunches.com. They're only 10 bucks. You spend way more money on that on, on, on frivolous shit. I'm quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and last but not least, I have a new show out right now. It's called Top Secret Videos. This is out Thursdays at 10.30 p.m., 9.30 Central. It's a wonderful, fun clip show. Uh, if you, I think it's just a great show to get a little inebriated, watch, have fun, listen to me, Brian Posehn, Ali Colbert, laughing together, joking together. And I, I mean, seriously, and you guys know I love pitching, but seriously, one thing that I, I really enjoy when watching it was like, I miss, I think, with all the isolation and everything that's going on, I miss that feeling of just hanging out and busting chops with your friends and just joking around and talking shit and talking trash. And that's kind of what this show is. So if you're feeling a little isolated, if you're feeling like you miss hanging out with, you need three funny friends to hang out with, check out Top Secret Videos, please, on True TV. Help your boy stay employed. I'm trying to build my own personal arcade. And keep my house afloat (laughs) oh fun let's get started with the affirmations and i think they're needed now more than ever let's get right into them i hope you're feeling strong i hope you're feeling brave i hope you're feeling loved and grateful for that love i hope you're feeling satisfied with the work that you've done I hope you put your best foot forward and then know how to put it away. And what I mean by that right now is that I hope you voted. Hope you voted. You got your vote in. And then you're able to divorce yourself from everything that's going on right now. You know, obviously, tell your family members to vote. Spread things out as you need be. But nothing's worse than when somebody lets their whole entire universe get dictated by one thing. and you have to go into this knowing you might not get what you want. The person that you voted for may or may not win. And you need to have a plan on how you can handle that afterwards. How are you going to be? Are you going to be distraught and, 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 and unconsolable and tie yourself up in a ball and eat a bunch of food and act like the world is over and say you're going to move to Canada, which is not even possible because they've closed their borders to us in preparation. <laughs> are you going to plan to, to, to be the change that you want to see again i love preaching personal power and a lot of times there's a lot of us going like oh why won't these people be good why won't these people be good to do what we want it's like we gotta be the ones get out there if you feel so empowered and so emboldened about it be out there and be a civil servant that's something i don't understand Got a lot of actors and comedians and whatnot who get naked and tell you to vote, but they don't want to get involved in actual politics. Get involved, motherfuckers. Start run, run, run for something. <laughs> if you care that much, get in there and run about it. But also, you know, I just also think it's a weird time when people try to um, underplay people's feelings. I don't want to, if you're feeling, you know, scared about this, you're feeling distraught about this, stressed. I know I'm feeling stressed, but I know there's people feeling it worse than me. And it's something that struck me when I was watching, I watched a bit of the, um, the uh, John Mulaney's uh, monologue on Saturday Night Live. And if you know me at all, you know I'm a big fan of John Mulaney. I consider John Mulaney a mentor of mine. He's uh, took me out on the road and 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 taught me a lot of lessons about how I act as a professional as a comedian in general. But it's one thing I didn't really enjoy in a set when he was talking about. You know, I thought it was a very um, simple joke. I'd be like, "Well, you're voting for one elderly white man or another elderly white man, and whoever wins, not much changes." And that's true of certain demographics. And I think that's true for his demographic, especially if you are financially well off, if you are Caucasian white male, then it probably doesn't mean much difference either way. But for people on the fringes, for people who 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 you hear it all the time, you talk about. I mean, I, I try to stay away from politics, but I even still I hear 
speeches from like Lindsey Graham and things like that, where they're clearly saying like, well, there's going to be certain groups of people who are welcome and uh, and what I would call a Trump's America and certain people, group of people who would not be welcome. Uh, and if you put your faith first and you're and you know your place as a minority or as a woman, then you're welcome. But if you're uppity and you have the nerve to think a little different, then you're not welcome. And so I think to them, selection very much matters. And it's a very, very big deal. It's a very, very big deal to people on the fringes, the people on the come up, the people who are dealing with social services and uh, uh, Medicare and Obamacare. To them, it's a very fucking big deal. So I just kind of wish he didn't say that. <laughs> Because I don't believe that. And to me, it shows privilege. It shows a lot of white male privilege. And I would say that shit to his face. Uh, so <laughs> either way. <laughs> yeah, it don't fucking matter to you, John. You're a rich white man that looks like a Republican. <laughs> like, yeah, I know you're not, but you look like one. So you're fine. But people on the fucking ground floor, it means a lot to them. That's why they're out there fucking protesting. It's right out there doing shit. Like, it means a lot. And I think um, just a reminder to me to be very careful with your words, especially during an election season, because people will take words that I'm sure he did not mean to, to be that powerful and they will twist them and they will push them. I mean, I just had an interview with TMZ the other day and I, I personally, I like doing interviews with TMZ because I consider it a fun challenge. Um, they usually are very nice to me, but then then they will post something up that says, Ron Funches takes down Louis C.K. <laughs> you know? And so at the end of the day, I got to go, oh, no matter how they treat me to my face, they're going to probably do something weird. And, uh, and I got to figure out how I handle that. And they were talking to me a little bit about Lil Wayne. And him uh, promoting Donald Trump and things like that, and and I said how I feel about it, which is how, if you if you haven't heard me talk about it before, or joke about it, it's just that it's like it's clear propaganda. It's clear. It also shows how out of touch this administration is. That they're like, who do black people like? Lil Wayne and Ice Cube, and it's like, no, not for a long time. <laughs> And platinum. They love platinum. So call it a platinum plan. Uh, is the Spree Wells plan taken? What about the Hennessy plan? Oh, that's also, oh, the Hennessy don't want to share that? Okay. Uh, collard green plan? Oh, that's too Southern? Okay. Okay, we'll stick with platinum plan then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I look at it. It's just clear fucking propaganda. People being paid off. People doing this or that. Blah 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 blah. And then of course Harvey, he's all like, "Well, you know, you don't want to consider black people to be a monolith, and that anybody, and we don't want it to think that just because you're black that you've automatically vote Democratic." Blah 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 blah. And I was like, "Yeah, of course. I'm a very definition of showing that black people aren't a monolith. I'm a pink wearing motherfucker that loves rugrats and is married to a Canadian white woman." I I love being different in myself and you, you know, I'm still strong, black, powerful man. I'm black and I'm proud. I am, but you can't tell me Lil Wayne gives a shit about voting. <laughs> I would put five grand on the fact that Lil Wayne has never voted including this upcoming election that he's promoting Trump for, I swear I would put so much money on the fact that he's not voted even this time. So who gives a fuck? And that's how crazy, it's a crazy fucking world where, where people are like, well, this, we should figure out what Lil Wayne thinks about <laughs> I only want to know what Lil Wayne thinks about DJs and whether they should go or not. Um, <laughs> how many millies he's got. Uh, <laughs> and whether or not there's some ceilings around him. And the answer is usually no. That's all I care <laughs> about with Lil I don't get my fucking politics from Lil Wayne. The fuck? Who the fuck are you? Don't get your politics from fucking me. I'm a fucking idiot. But who I do listen to is fucking scientists, smart people, uh, you know, my mom, shit like that. 
and they all seem to be pro Biden. So if you haven't got your vote in by now, go vote in person. It's very important. And then fucking let's leave it alone. Let's cut the cut cord. Let's fucking de-escalate. Shit's gonna get weird. Um, I mean, I'm flat out telling y'all for for real what I'm doing is like I already got all my groceries put together. I got some extra waters put together. I don't want to go outside much next week to tell you the God honest truth. And that feels weird. That feels different. Not like a normal election. Uh, so that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay home and stay huddled up until these fucking PlayStation and this Xbox show up and ride it out. And that's it. There's gonna be ways. There's gonna be things. But I swear to God, Trump is gonna say, I won. No matter what. He's gonna say, I won. Whether he did or not, he's gonna say it. And then we're gonna have a whole bunch of weird shit happen. I just want you guys to be prepared for it. Don't let your emotions take control of you. Especially when we mix it with the upcoming holiday season. That is a lot of stress for a motherfucker to take. So you better be on your shit right now. You better be looking out for you right now. You better be meditating. You better be getting your reading on, your art on. Get your weed, get your writing, get your exercise. Hit that treadmill because you don't want to fucking go into 2021. Either things might be better or you might need to be on the front line <laughs> of an uprising. And so you need to fucking have your shit together. So <laughs> well, either way, have your plans for how you're going to mentally handle things, how to handle disappointment. If it happens to you, how are you going to come Schumann? Not a lot of people are actually going to pack up and run to Canada. So have a plan for how you're either going to be, um, how you're going to be part of the solution and not just part of the problem. As, as simple as that fucking sounds. What are we doing time wise? Oh, so you nailed it. Cool. Cause I was about to start rambling. If we had to go any further, good. I like talking about I like talking about this shit, especially when I don't get interrupted or if people clip it up and say shit. Although I'm sure we'll get some clips up of that Milady thing. <laughs> Just if I know all things comedy and Halston. Uh, <laughs> we got a great show for you today. Our very special guest outside of comedy, outside of the things, but wonderful dream weaver herself in the video game community and the youtube community uh just a person who became a dear friend of mine um is a forefront of like you know game journey i don't want to say that shit that doesn't sound right uh she's just a cool person creating a lot of dreams and a lot of money and assets out of uh, what things she loves whether it's video games creating things on twitch youtube uh playing Fortnite with saint vincent um a lot of different things i just think there's a cool person coming a new friend of mine in the last year or so so i thought it'd be fun to talk to her we've got Abby Russell on the podcast today. Abby from the internet. Abby from Brooklyn. Abby, straight into your hearts. Enjoy it. Hi, Abby. Hello, Ron. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Yes, of course. I appreciate that. You really snuck it in there quick, too. (laughs) I got to get the first one in so I know I'm the better friend. Yeah, that's really that's I mean that really leads to the beginning of the podcast, which is I usually start by telling people I why I want them on, and for you the one you know one of the many reasons you're obviously <laughs> very um, intelligent person and funny person, and you know a lot about video games, which is important <laughs> to me. But the most important thing is that you're a very nice person. You're oh, very thank kind. You. <laughs> person that i see um just in your interactions in, in the world and online and in and, and in person and and so i want that's why i wanted you on the podcast thank you i appreciate it are we is this the start of it i assume yeah it we're is. rolling okay it's this the real we start. start well yeah. thank you very much that's very kind okay. i um i do like i don't like being mean <laughs> i think sometimes i like it a little bit with like friends when I'm like gossiping or something, but I don't want to actually be mean to anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. It's fun that that's why I always say, don't get it confused. I love talking shit. That's <laughs> fun. I have a great time. 
and doesn't mean I'm not a judgmental person. I love ju- casting judgments, but privately and with class is how <laughs> I say. I yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I also feel like for me with like gossiping, I feel like starting with gossiping is just going to make me seem like a petty bitch to start talking about that. But I feel like with gossiping, the way I gossip at least is usually like oh, I had this bad interaction with someone and now I'm just like venting versus like, oh, did you hear, I don't know, whatever this person's dealing with. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're doing firsthand gossip. Yeah, exactly. No, that's that's important to do. I agree. (laughs) It's also fun. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for people who don't know you, let's introduce you, Abby Russell. I know you. You were an improviser in several groups, (laughs) according to the research I I looked up. (laughs) Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, multiple groups great. and and people know you from working on giant bomb and 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 from a recent article i met, read called you a <laughs> prominent youtuber who played with saint vincent uh, <laughs> they did uh just as much research i think when they wrote that one <laughs> 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 yeah, I always think that's fun when people say things like, we're like well, why would, no, that's the least. I guess sometimes they'll get things and they're like, we're wrong, we're looking for you as an influencer. And I'm like, that, I do so many things. <laughs> and that's what you want to call me? So I understand. Yeah, I was okay being called a YouTuber, but yeah, it was, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's me. Um, I do the most embarrassing form of comedy, which is improv comedy. Um, I also, yes, I work for Giant Bomb, which is a video game website. And recently, I got a little bit of press. Really, more specifically, St. Vincent got some press, and I wrote her coattails for playing Fortnite with St. Vincent on YouTube. But that also means you're a bit of a dream weaver, because that's what (laughs) you put out into the world. You made a series called... That, that you wanted to play Fortnite with St. Vincent and then you play with other people, including myself, and then you made it happen. It's I, true. That's pretty cool to me. Thank you. It was very fun. Um, and it was a thing that I think I, going into it, was like, I don't know if she'll agree to this, but I bet she'll eventually see it. And the fact that she agreed to it, I was like so thankful. She had such a good sense of humor about the whole thing because truly on paper, it's um, an insane premise. <laughs> so for her to agree to it is pretty, pretty cool. Well, let's talk about your love of comedy and video games. What got you into, I mean, first of all, again, like improvising of all things. <laughs> <laughs> what started your love of that? Um, I think for me, you know, I did, of course, grow up watching Whose Line Is It Anyway? <laughs> um, but I think I just thought improv seemed fun to do. And... I signed up for an improv class like the night before it started. I think I was like, yeah, I was like, I had just dropped out of college. I was like in a relationship that I could tell was ending and all my friends were like, like bunched into that relationship. So I was like, I need to get a new friend group. So I was like, I guess I'll just do improv. I want to do it for a while. I like impulsively signed up for it. And then that just sort of became my whole social life. Um, And then I just also enjoyed it. And I felt like I was not bad at it, which was fun. So I think it was, yeah, I think I think I did it out of desperation and then I um, sort of grew to love doing comedy and also just like, I knew that like going to New York, it was easy to be like, okay, well, I will, you know, I'll find a, a social circle here. And I did, like totally. Yeah, it's fun. I think something that people don't think about is they often look for the end results of that, of that journey of like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to get into whatever it is, stand up, improv, whatever, and I'm going to become this. But I think one of the best benefits of it is finding a a group of peers that kind of have the same goals that you have and and are similar sense of humor that you have. And and I've met so many lifelong friends um, through comedy that have been just as important as any accolade or anything that I've gotten. And um, it really kind of helped me stop feeling lost because for a Hmm. long time and there was like oh these people you know high growing up high school i was like these people aren't my circle of friends they don't like the same things that i like as i got older it was still the same thing and then even when i got into comedy it was still very small i was like oh 
that's what was what confused me. I was like, oh, once I got into comedy, I thought I, everybody would be all the people <laughs> I love. But then you're like, oh, no, no, some of these people are weirdos and creeps with a <laughs> self-defined job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I feel the same way, though. It's like, you know, obviously in any social group, you'll find people you don't like or people you do. But I don't know. It's just nice knowing that I can always turn to like whatever comedy theaters around to probably find somebody I like. It's also, yeah, I think talking about like goals and like, I think for me, I enjoyed the act of doing comedy and like, yeah, I wanted to get on like a house team at an improv theater. But I also think I had the perspective of knowing that like it didn't really matter. And I found performing very fulfilling. Yes. But also just like talking to people and feeling like I was surrounded by people who challenged me, which I really liked. And I feel like I get that with, you know, my job at Giant Bomb too. Nice. So what made you want to work in video games? Um, I, you know, I went to school for film production to study like documentaries and I wanted to be like a film editor. Um, and I didn't really expect to get into like a video game job. Um, but then like right when I finished college, the job posting was listed and I had like three different people tag me in it on Facebook, which I'm not really even on anymore, but, um, <laughs> And then I like applied for it and then I got it. And it was just like the perfect intersection of like, here's like comedy performance stuff. Here is like a technical video production stuff. And then here's also video games, which I enjoy doing anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. So just sort of wound up being like a really good fit. And like, I just got, I think, very lucky with the timing of it. I find that interesting because it kind of reminds me of how comedy is in general right now, where it's less about like doing one thing and it is about being able to... um, have these backgrounds where you not only know about the thing you're talking about, but you can be entertaining on your own and and you have some type of like, you know, talent in front of the camera as well as technical skills to, to get it up and get it out. (laughs) You know, you got to kind of really be a Jack of all trades right now, where I think as before it was kind of easier to be kind of a a antisocial and just write about games or just, write about comedy and or write comedy and now it's kind of seems like more towards the uh vaudeville era again which i personally love so. right with just like people posting their own stuff all the time yeah and doing i mean someone who i really enjoy is like flula borg who i don't know if you're familiar with him but he does He's a, german right he is german yes. he does all so many things he does his music videos he does his, his race stand up he's on like NBA doing commentating and then he's also really? like in movies <laughs> acting you know he's just yeah. doing little bits of everything and I like I just always um, I think that's fun always just kind of challenge yourself in that way yeah for sure I also like like I feel very fortunate to have the technical skills to know how to like put up a video or like to put up a live stream because I feel like it does give me the freedom to be like okay, if I want to write a web series, I can like write a web series and just shoot it and like do it myself. And I don't have to worry about like all of the production stuff. I mean, I still do, but in a different sense than I think someone would if they didn't know how to like run a camera or edit video, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just um, the more you you know about all aspects of your job, the better you can be at any of it. So you don't have to rely. It just takes away relying on other people. Yeah, for sure. I think also for better and for worse, though, because I know for me, like, I have, like, a pretty good work ethic. I, I'm very self-motivated and I like working. But I think also it's hard sometimes because I do feel like collaboration is so important and so good. I don't know. I know I've found it hard sometimes to be like, oh, I have all these ideas and I want to do them. And the easiest thing is for me to just do it myself. But I think, like, the much more fulfilling thing is, like, finding people to do it with but it's also like so hard to do that you know what i mean like it's so hard to find people who are like willing to commit to it especially when you don't have any money to give them (laughs) and also just like find people who are just as excited about it you know what i mean yeah yeah it um that's i think one of the things that kind of made me not want to get involved in any like team right style of comedy or improv because they when i first started i wanted to do like a two man thing with this other friend of mine. But at the end of the day, it was just kind of me putting my dreams on him. You know, Mm. I was like, no, we both want to do this. Right. (laughs) So if we want to do it, then I'm not as scared anymore, you know? Right. And, 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 
but he didn't. So then if he didn't want to do it, then I felt like, oh, well, then I don't have to go do anything either. And after a while, I was like, oh, no, I need to just focus on what I, I'm doing. But um, in doing that, it's like I've met so many other people who are like that, you know, who yeah, are kind of like their own lone wolf style of doing things. And then it's fun to work with them and then learn from them. And and, and you just kind of pass each other, you know, on the, on your journeys instead of like, you know. And and some people, I think, are lucky. Like, I, I kind of get jealous of people who kind of or the like like you know Nick Kroll and John Mulaney where they mm -hmm. have these these friendships for so long and they've known each other and they're both like like at the same level you know right and whereas I kind of like more of just met my friends as we've passed you know but there are some people I've known for like a decade now that are killing it like my friends shout out Best Ellen she watch her special it's great <laughs> I should I've been meaning to I just haven't yet I did listen to her episode of this podcast it was great big fan yeah she's great it's a really good it's my favorite special of the year it's amazing girl daddy hbo max <laughs> check it out everybody uh, <laughs> <laughs> i want to know a bit more about you that um like your how you grew up and your in your oh, childhood yeah why is that yes <laughs> i feel what like i've never <laughs> way to ask mm, interesting that. i was waiting for someone to ask <laughs> <laughs> i don't know any specific part i mean I like kind of like moved around a lot as a kid. So I was like born in Virginia and then we lived in Florida for a while and then my parents got divorced and I moved in with my dad and my sister in Texas, like instead of Austin. My mom was in Virginia, so we'd see her for summers. And then we moved in with my mom and my dad went to San Francisco and we would see him for summers. And then we went to Boston and we would see him for summers. And then we went to Boston and my mom went to Alaska. And then I moved to New York as an adult. Wow, that is quite yeah. a bit. I guess I also spent a summer in like Ohio too. <laughs> with That's my quite a bit. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Wow. There's no re like good reason for it either. Everyone's always like, oh, military family. And I'm like, not really. Like when I was very little, my dad was in the Navy, but we just moved a lot. It's also kind of interesting that you mean because you moved in with your dad and said you were living with your mom in the beginning. Was there a reason behind mm -hmm. that? Um, I mean, I was pretty young, but I think. I think that just is how it worked out with my family. I mean, I think that's probably a better question for my folks. Um, but yeah, I think that's just how it shook out. I don't know. I know it's atypical. I feel like most people usually do wind up with like a mother figure. But yeah, I don't know. It's most curious with my dad. I mean, I saw I, you know, have a good relationship with my mom. I still see her all the time. And like we lived with her for a few years in like middle school-ish. But yeah, I mean, you have to live with one parent, right? I guess some people. Don't. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Some people get emancipated. Yeah. And, uh, some people live like <laughs> Aladdin, and they're just street rats, and they <laughs> and, and they hang out with a monkey, and still. I mean, that'd be pretty fun. I, yeah, actually, I mean, <laughs> in theory, it would be. In reality, you getting lots of diseases. Very I mean, quickly. he may have, but he wound up with the princess, so. <laughs> that's true. Well, that, that she ended up with a lot of diseases. <laughs> 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 so when bouncing around so much did you have a, a lot of friends still or like how do you manage that because i didn't really have that many friends because i moved around a bunch um which is why i probably was mostly an indoor kid playing a lot of video <laughs> games but i'm it maybe been different for you because you had you're a bit younger than me so you guys right. probably were more internet together that's true i mean i would say no, I mean, I had friends in the places we lived at. I'd say high school, because when I moved to like Boston with my dad, it was like right after my freshman year of high school, which I think is like a really hard time to move, like transitioning in high school. And instead of like going to a new school and being like, oh, I don't know anyone. Let me like be vulnerable and open with people and like talk to them. I kind of like drew into myself. I didn't really get friends until like late high school, which was fine. But I think that also is what drew me to like doing improv and finding a community and now having like like, I really value my friends and I am, like, willing to put in the effort to, like, keep them as my friends. You know what I mean? Like, I have no reservations about being like, oh, I texted them first last time. I shouldn't be the one to make plans now. I'm just like, no, if I want to mm -hmm. see my friends, I'm going to reach out and see my friends. You know what I mean? That's like, good. It's important. It's yeah. It's hard to maintain friendships as an adult. I agree. I, I feel like I've kind of gotten pretty good at it now. But, yeah, I think it's just not being shy about being like, hey, let's talk. Like, I haven't talked to you in a while. What's up? Um 
But yeah, I would say, I mean, I have some friends from childhood, but not really. Um, I'd say most of my friends are adult friends. Yeah, I always, me too. My, that's my, where my wife, she has like friends from like high school and middle school. Yeah, that's just like wild to me. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, like everybody, the youngest friends I have are from like when I first started comedy. That's it. Right. Like, I, I think there's like two lives I lived pre comedy <laughs> and then post comedy. And those pre comedy friends, I don't talk to anymore. <laughs> exactly. <I'm> just- <laughs> I relate to this 100%. <laughs> I also realized recently I was like talking to someone and I realized I don't think I remember the name I think I remember the name of like one of my teachers growing up and like that's it I don't think I could name like a single one of my teachers except for that one teacher who I thought was very cool (laughs) yeah I think I had one cool teacher too who kind of was just like this is all bullshit then he got fired so I don't know <laughs> oh, that's wild. I don't yeah. I feel like it probably takes a lot to get fired from a school. I mean, maybe not, but No, I think it does. <laughs> I feel like I've had teachers where I'm like, y'all aren't teaching anything and they weren't there for like ten years. Yeah, one time we wow. watched Species, the movie Species in my school, and I don't think you should be watching that. There's a hot tub scene in that movie. Oh, really? I'm not familiar with it. Oh, there's a lot of murdering, and the lady is half monster, <laughs> and she gets you whilst you have sex with her. You know classic, classic <laughs> movie plot line. Um, Sounds um, educational. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. I have some more questions just about working in um video games and particularly being a young woman that works in video Mm. games because it seems like a lot of people um (laughs) react more to what you have to say (laughs) and that i don't know why yes unless it's the answer is just sexism um (laughs) (laughs) i think uh probably i mean i think it's a mix of things i feel like With my job, I think sometimes, like, the burden of, like, talking about sexism in games or, like, the representation of women in games can fall to me, I think, just because I see it more as a woman. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's easier for me to point it out when it happens, and I think I also just care more about it. Um, To give context, I I work with, like, all men. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I, I think for me... What I find most insidious is less the people who are like outwardly sexist, who are like openly like, I hate Abby because she's a woman. And it's just like, cool, I'm never going to appeal to you. Like, whatever. You at least like we're both on the same page. We both know that you're a sexist and that's fine. I think what bothers me more is like the people who I think will criticize me in a way that's like a little more coded or a little more like subtle And I think it's rooted in their own unconscious biases. And I think probably for them, they would be like, I'm not I'm not sexist. Like, I love my wife. I love, you know, my my daughters or I love my mom or whatever. Like, I have girlfriends. Um, I think that's the stuff that, like, really gets me more. But no, I relate to that. I I understand that. Because, you know, obviously dealing with that with racism often. Yeah, for sure. It's easier to be like, okay, well, just fuck you if you just (laughs) racist. And then there's people who are more, like you said, coded about it. And you're just like, whoa, like I don't even know how to come at you because you won't come at me directly. Right, (laughs) for sure. Yes. It's like you won't come at me directly. And also like, like I feel like those people don't even see their own racism or their own sexism because it's like to them, it's so like such an unconscious bias, I think. But it's still like rooted within, I don't know, the stuff they're talking about this stuff they're criticizing yeah which to me it seems like you have to be um kind of just completely naive or just maybe you just want you don't want to share this pastime or this this thing that you've had that you consider your own with more groups of people but like you know i as a black man and just grew up being like, man, I wish there was more representations for me, more characters for me to pick character creation where I didn't have to be a black guy with a white guy's hairstyle (laughs) or, you know, (laughs) 
are you know i may still there's reasons why like i escaped from streets of rage 2 and things like that where i just was like oh cool it's fun black characters we still love barrett even though i was like well he doesn't he sounds like a white guy pretending to be black (laughs) but we're gonna take him anyway right (laughs) and now we get more and more with where where it's um more commonplace to just see these nuanced stories of characters of all different backgrounds and different races and and I don't understand why people it doesn't like take away from right, these for sure. other games. They still exist. It's also like, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't really get it either. I think people just like like being mad sometimes. That's true. Um yeah. I don't know. I like try not to I try not to read comments for the most part. Like with it's a little bit tricky with our audience because there I think is a little more of like a parasocial relationship versus like I don't know, some other, I guess for lack of a better word, like public figures, just because we are so online and like we are subscription based. Mm -hmm. So like you do have to listen to the comments to a certain degree because we are catering to an audience. And I think there is somewhat of a back and forth. But I also think for me, it's very rare that like I look at a comment section and it doesn't say the thing I already expected it to say. You know what I mean? Like for the most part, I know, like after I shoot a video or after I do a podcast, like I know what could have been better about it or what could have been different or what I think people will probably like about it. So like when people are like, well, you got to listen to like audience feedback. I'm like, yes and no. I also have like peers and like colleagues and a boss who will give me feedback on my work. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I don't necessarily need to take it from a bunch of strangers online. No, I've always believed in that. I I just like whenever I've seen things like like, where I, you know, if you're like, oh, I hate this and I don't, I, this isn't for me, that's fine. But right. when people are like, meh, could have been better. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Yeah. I'm trying exactly. to make it better. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I like, I, I'm so thankful to our audience at Giant Bomb and like to just Giant Bomb in general. Like it's truly changed my life forever like this is my first job out of college and like what a privilege it's been but Mm -hmm. you know I also try to remember that like there is the silent majority versus like the vocal minority and I think for me when I'm consuming any kind of content like even stuff that I like love to death and I'm like wild about at most I might like go tell my friends about it Um, occasionally I'll like tweet about certain things but like for the most part I don't go to forums and talk about this stuff like I think Mm -hmm. most people who consume any piece of media don't do that. Like, I think mm-hmm. it's a very specific type of person who want to have that, like, discourse online. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Um, that, But what you said, you saying this being your first job out of college and <laughs> and um, which to me is pretty awesome. You can sit, it's like you got to give yourself props for being such a, <laughs> a young business professional. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Abby. Um, but what what where do you see yourself in the future? What are some of your goals for the future? Short term, long term, mm. personal, career? Where's Abby Russell headed? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think for me, I have like, I think lofty dreams of like things I would love to do one day. Like I would love mm-hmm. to one day. This is like very much like a pipe dream. We'll see if it happens. But I would love to like move to London and like film myself riding a motorcycle across Europe. Like, I think that would be so cool. Um, And I think that'd be very fun and like a fun way to like make money if I could monetize it. Um, But I don't know. I also, you know, I, I love comedy. I really like writing comedy. I would love to do more with comedy writing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I want to stay in video games forever. I think is also the thing. Like I really love my time here, but I don't know. It's just hard to imagine, especially after Giant Bomb, where I have so much creative freedom. Like, I'm not sure where I would go after this in the video game world. You know what I mean? It does seem like such a small pool of um, jobs that do seem not to just be commercials. Right. (laughs) Sure. And like, I I don't necessarily even mind that stuff so much, but it's also just like, I'm not like, uh, I don't write reviews of video games. You know, like with this job at Giant Bomb, it is such like a specific kind of niche thing that I do every day. And like, yes, I've like learned a lot of technical skills and I've also become, I think, a much better like host and performer because of it. But also like, what other job is like this? (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I think not a lot. So at least not a lot in the gaming industry. But 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that's a big question. I, think I would you like do to know, Abby. I think you <laughs> do know. The, the I... amount of times you say, I don't know, kind of <laughs> leads me to believe the opposite that you do know. <laughs> I mean, I would love to make more money. Um, that's a goal, my five year goal. I want to make more money. Um, okay. Yeah. How, though? <laughs> That's a great question. That's the that's the eternal question. Into a friendly interrogation. <laughs> in, I know. I feel like I'm talking to my mom. I like it. <laughs> fun. We can um, talk about setting goals. You do a vision board, Abby. <laughs> I don't. I should. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I feel like for me, because I, I know a lot of people who do like New Year's resolutions and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I actually did do that this year. I don't normally do them because I'm. I try to be a person who is like, oh, I want to fix the thing. I'm just going to start doing it and improving it now versus like waiting for like an anniversary or something. Absolutely. But this year, I actually did set a new year's resolution of like i want to do more open mics and go to more open mics and then COVID happened <laughs> and saved me from my uh new year's resolution so i went yeah. to one i think <laughs> there's a couple things i care a lot about there's a few things i'll spend my money on i'm actually a pretty cheap person if you uh follow me i'm mostly wearing a lot of t-shirts and hoodies uh and then occasionally i wear a nice suit uh and and then same in my life i don't go out and spend a lot of money on on food and and, and or jewelry or anything like that but i do believe spending my money in a couple of things uh uh, the bathroom i want to get a japanese toilet anybody that knows me knows that about me and then also in the bedroom where you sleep i feel like it's very important you spend most of your life you spend a good third of the day you're supposed to in your bed sleep so you need to have a great bed i remember when i was fucking young and poor and not doing well at all i had a mat on the floor worst night sleeps of my life bad back not feeling well not doing well and that's where helixsleep.com has come in they have provide wonderful custom fit matches you take two free two minute quiz they'll match you up with the mattress that is perfect for you i did it it was nice and easy i walked it through with my son because i wanted to get him a new mattress and we just talked about what he likes what his height his weight if he prefers to sleep on his back his side things like that it got shipped to us very quickly it came in a cute little box we just had to unfold it like a genie and it popped open and it uh, and now he's sleeping great he's getting a good night's sleep which is very important for him with all the school that he's got to do the homeschooling and the fact that i'm not you know keeping track of that he has to handle that on his own so he needs to get a good night's rest and he's been getting that get yourself a great helix mattress go to helixsleep.com slash funches take their two minute sleep quiz they'll match you up with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of their life they have a 10-year warranty that you get to try out a hundred nights risk free helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners of getting better that's so nice of them just go to helixsleep.com slash punches that's h-e-l-i-x sleep.com slash punches Guys, if you know me, you know I love being able to talk about my problems, talking things out, helping each other get better. But we can't just put that on each other. You got to talk to a licensed therapist sometimes, especially these days where everything is so stressful and so new. We need someone to talk to, which is why I want to thank our new sponsor, Talkspace. Talkspace provides online therapy wherever you need it, anywhere, anytime. You can reach out 24-7 whenever something is on your mind and you'll hear back from them daily, five days a week. So it sounds like a really good idea to me. Talkspace is is a wonderful service because it is affordable. It's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. But with Talkspace, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist and they'll engage with you at least five days a week. That means you never have to wait to share what's on your mind. The bottom line is we all need someone to talk to. And Talkspace wants to give us the licensed support we deserve at a price that we can afford. So I want to say thank you to Talkspace because you know I'm a firm believer in therapy and talking things out and and talking about what's on your mind. As a listener to this podcast, you get $100 off your first month on Talkspace. To match with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com or just download the app. Make sure you use the code RON to get $100 off your first month and show support for the show. Again, that promo code is RON and it's Talkspace.com. We appreciate you supporting the podcast and we appreciate you helping people most of all thank you talk space well that yeah that that covid killed a lot of resolutions this year. right 
I'm just happy yeah. to be maintaining myself, uh, especially with weight and stuff. I was like, oh, I'm a balloon up. But we, oh, really? We've been okay. We've been okay. I feel uh, like I've, um, I think because I am stuck being so stationary during lockdown, I think it's made me work out more, which I really have been enjoying. I've been like mm-hmm. jogging. I like jog today, which is fun, but I'm trying to work out more. What's your That's go-to workout? Goal. What do you like? What do you like doing? I like lifting weights. I like clanging and banging. I like <laughs> getting in there and just de- doing some presses. Yeah. Yeah, doing some squats. I My like- friend Paul was really into weightlifting, and I would go to the gym with him sometimes, and it was so fun. He would teach me how to, like, deadlift, which was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, uh, I wish Paul was here now. He's the best. He's, like, he doesn't look like a person who you would think would be really into bodybuilding, but he, like, totally is. And once we were like inviting him to a party and he's not like a big party guy. He's not like a big attention guy. But me and my friends were inviting him to a party and we're like, okay, we're going to like have food for you at this party. What kind of food do you want? Like, what kind of food do you eat? And he was being all dodgy about it. And we're like, what kind of food do you eat? And he's like, well, I like like lean turkey cutlets and I microwave them and put oil on them to, so I can get healthy fats. Um, anyway, that's what I think about when I think about bodybuilding <laughs> oh my he's friend a paul freak. paul's a yeah freak. <laughs> paul's a freak his his thing for the party was oatmeal and turkey cutlets and we got it for him <laughs> i like that you that's good friends yes you, uh, you i got, love paul yeah you gotta respect <laughs> paul so paul's kind of like out of net net flanders where you're just like <laughs> yeah. hanging out but then rip the shirt off and you're like oh, damn. <laughs> truly he's like real buff I mean, it makes sense. He bodybuilds, but... Yeah, and he only eats chicken breasts with... (laughs) That's a a bodybuilder, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I want you to... I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Abby. (laughs) I came here to interview, but I think I want you to make a vision board, organize some of these goals, because you are a bright person. (laughs) You are a a great entertainer on on the show. You you, you sparkle as like you could do things in in any area. You're a great host. So I want you to figure out what you want to do, because like you said, I mean, we've seen the place getting sold left and right. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i should make a vision board you're right i also think i get a little bashful talking about like goals and stuff i think it's so scary i think it's one it's also just scary to do that in front of an audience to be like i have big dreams you know what i mean like it's so scary to i do know that. it is scary but it's important to say because all it does is like you you know say i want these things it doesn't mean you you are going yeah. to get them and it doesn't mean that you're a bad person to want things but it's it, very true it's also i mean i did that with saint vincent i said i wanted to play fortnite with her and look at me now i've that's played exactly, fortnite with her that's what a vision board is abby <laughs> you right, said it that. you worked on it you <laughs> just did it with you with just intentions of joy you didn't think it was gonna work out and then it did <laughs> That's a vision board, Abby. (laughs) Although I did think part of me did think it would work out. Like it was all a ruse to play Fortnite with my friends. But I knew. I feel like, you know. You do know. And you know what you want (laughs) to do. (laughs) Yeah. Well, look, I want to ride a motorcycle around the world or around the U.S. I want to be paid as a comedy writer. I think those are two pretty good things for a vision board. There you go. Also, you said it. I I want you said that. (laughs) You said a definition that time. Yes. Third thing, I want an ass that just won't quit. More working (laughs) out. More running. (laughs) Put that on the vision board. (laughs) 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 Gotta start eating turkey cutlets. Yeah. Working on it. Yeah, uh, yeah that's Paul. <laughs> Paul can help you out. Dude, he would be gl- more than glad to, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are your, let's talk some games. What are your, some okay. of your favorite games of the year? And we, we should play games on Twitch sometimes. Like, yes. I want to play Among Us with you. or something. Yes, like I would love that. to. I am very intense with Among Us. I hope that's fine. Um, mm-hmm. But I would love to play Among Us with you. I would also love to play... Um, phasmophobia have you played that yet i have and my friends keep trying to talk me into it's... it i hate all things horror <laughs> except for resident oh, evil really? games mm. but usually only the early resident evil games <laughs> yeah i mean it's really scary and i'm like the biggest wimp when it comes to horror games i also think i've played so many for work because i have like a halloween feature where i just play like different scary games mm-hmm. so i think it's like helped me to build a little bit of armor for it but 
it's hard for me to persuade you to play a scary game if you don't like them, but it would be very fun. We would love to have you. Oh, yeah. A lot um, of friends have been trying to get me to play. The same thing happened with Among Us, though, and then I loved it. So maybe. Yeah. I do like Among Us. What kind of Among Us player are you? Because I am, like, when I play, I always want to be the killer, and I never am. Mm-hmm. And then I always, like, find somebody to accuse and then get everybody to vote for them, whether or not they're the killer. <laughs> it's very fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty laid back. And then as people have come to tell me, my tell is that if I am the imposter, I start talking a lot about different snacks and food to get people <laughs> off the off the tail. And try to get them all wrapped up and, you know, telling me what their favorite That's ice smart. creams are, you know. All right. I got to I got to use that strategy. It's but yeah, fun. let's play. I feel like I've mostly just been playing Fortnite. I was talking mm-hmm. to Halston about this, actually. I feel like in during lockdown, it's been nice to, one, just have a thing. Because, like, I was talking to him about, like, I feel weird just, like, calling my friends on the phone. But, like, I love just hanging out with them in video games. And it's fun to, like, Fortnite is a good thing that's, like, it's free. It's on every console. So it's really easy to get people to play with me. And I also think doing that Fortnite with St. Vincent video started me playing it more and meeting more people who were playing it all the time. So it's a, it's a lot of Fortnite, to be honest. That's mostly what I've been playing. I think you kind of uh, said uh, an important thing that I've stumbled upon this year, but for me, it's been more with, like playing Call, Call of Duty or mm-hmm. just my Twitch in general, which is that um, and he, I, I'm used to seeing a lot of people every week and meeting right. a lot of new people every week and, and being social. And I mean, I used to probably hug like, 50 people a week you know (laughs) Uh, and now it's none but my wife and my son and right and for me like twitch and and a lot of these multiplayer games have been very helpful to remain social and meet new friends and and find um through common interests instead of as like you said sometimes it's weird to like just kind of call your friend and be like i'm lonely you know right (laughs) yes (laughs) But, like, truly when I play Fortnite, it's the same thing. Like, it just gives me something to do with my hands. But it's just, like, a phone call. But it's so nice. But, yeah, I totally get that. I also think that is a really nice thing with this job where I don't really feel lonely because it's such a social job. Where, like, I'm talking to an audience or I'm talking to my coworkers. And, like, I basically, like, a lot of my job is just having conversations in front of a microphone, which is fun and has been nice sort of in this, like, lack of like uh, this like environment where I can't really be social in the same way that I used to. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Very helpful than that. I've been like, you know, just more great as you, I don't want to sound like a t- stereotypical Twitch streamer. I got, but I'm like, <laughs> very grateful for my community. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know what you mean <laughs> as a fellow Twitch streamer. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it's so much fun. Uh, I forgot what my next question was for you. It was, it was, I think it was going to be good, but I forgot it now. Well, uh, hopefully it'll come back. I'm sure I will get to it. I don't, I don't mind just talking and chatting. <laughs> um, what do you think of about new? Yeah. I mean, I do just want to talk about new systems, but you're, mm. you're, you're, we're kind of opposite. I am like always been since day one, like dick, let's get it. it I'm going to get it anyway. Yeah. So I might as well buy it day one. Which is just, fair. I think, yeah, I think that's a very fair attitude. And I will say, the harder it is to find these consoles, the more I'm like, ooh, if I get a link for one, I'm buying it now. <laughs> like I do want that weird looking PS5. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, it's like, I, it always takes like six months before there's anything I can play on the newer console that I can't play on my older console. Mm-hmm. And I think this is also, you know, with this being my first um, job in video games, it was hard to justify like, well, why get all these other consoles? Or like, why get it right away when like I have this one that works just fine? But I think now that I'm playing more games, it makes a little more sense for me to do so. Although I did just buy um, an Oculus and it should oh, get here you? tomorrow, which I'm really excited for. Yes. Ooh, I put aside some money to get a new PC and I'm trying to budget it enough so that I can get also maybe an, one of those indexes as Is, well. Which the, one's index? The uh, Valve one. That they oh, made. okay. Yeah. yeah. With, the, with the fun hands. With the hands. Mm. <laughs> 
But then yeah. also, I'm like, there's not much in VR that I I keep being like, you just want it. There's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I will say I have just wanted it for a while and I just bought it like two days ago. And then today I had the realization of like, there are two games I think I really want to play for it. But you know what? I'm here for the journey. I'm sure I'll find more. I also just think it's fun. It's like a fun thing to have. I think VR is so cool. And I think right now is the time for VR, right? Like I'm stuck inside anyway. It's about to be Mm -hmm. cold. Give me some VR. Well, I think you also just made the exact argument i would make for buying a system day one i'm here for the journey <laughs> part of the community it's okay there's only yeah. a couple games to play but that truly is a member having a 360 and just playing geometry wars and, <laughs> and uh, also back then it's kind of fun because you kind of see your entire friends list move from one game to another oh right <laughs> as opposed to when it's like three years into the cycle and everybody's playing something different but that first six months of a system everybody is playing the same thing and it's kind of cool that is cool that's like i feel like that's kind of that thing you know when you like go to college and like the first person you meet at orientation is like well we're going to be friends by necessity now i feel like those are the games that come out in like an early console of like well i'll be your friend for now but no the second i meet somebody else at a party you're dead to me (laughs) you're out of here geometry wars exactly as soon as skyrim comes out (laughs) here. <laughs> did you order wait so how'd you get the console because they're hard to get like i feel like i've been looking now and i like oh I i've I just might been get... on that wario 64 life for uh... years so i i i put a notification out the days where he's getting ready to post about them mm-hmm. and i just happened to be ready both times to get that amazon link so i got i got them both both pre-ordered and yeah. uh you know, one of them did say you perhaps will not receive it on launch <laughs> day. Uh, but that's OK. Yeah, one of, I one support of them it. will get here. One of them will get here. I'm excited mm-hmm. to play. I'm ex- actually excited to play old Xbox games on the. Uh, oh, on yeah. The X. Can you? Yeah, that is exciting. I have enjoyed playing some of the older ones on my Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. Um, Red Dead Redemption on Xbox. Red Dead One Redemption. X? Yes, on. I've been playing that one. I've been playing like SSX Three. Love the SSX games. Yeah. What were your favorite games um, when you were a kid? Hmm, that's a fun question. Or which um, end of all time. Uh, my favorite games of all time, and also as a kid. Both. Yes. Okay. Favorite game of all time. That's a hard one. I would probably say Red Dead Redemption Two. But I do like the first one as well. Or not, well, I have played Red Dead Revolver and it's kind of campy and fun. But Mm. I would say Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably favorite of all time. But I also really love the Katamari series. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that game is very much like my style and right up my alley. I would say as a kid growing up, we played a lot of Nancy Drew games, me and my sister, for the computer. That was like a fun go-to. I also played a lot of the Wii growing up. So I would play like Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort. Trying to think of the games I was like really into the sims of course mm-hmm. yeah we know we know you're a big fan <laughs> I mean these are games I all still play for the most part so yeah um I think also I remember we played a lot of um is it is it called gauntlet what's that game that's like wizard needs food badly yeah that's gauntlet we played a ton of gauntlet my dad had this old like joust machine we would play I loved Gauntlet. That just reminds yeah. me of pizza. Like just really, yeah. Because I think we play Gauntlet at the Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, that's so my, funny. That's, yeah, I was like that. That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still there were young. Chuck E. Cheeses for me. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, they kind of switched over into like more of right. like mini game style games. Yeah, when I'm gonna I was be honest. There. I never knew that they had like arcade style like exactly. quarter games. <laughs> <laughs> this is news to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um i want to know what's been the funnest moment you've had on stage Ooh, wow i feel like there's no way for me to talk about this without seeming like i think what it was okay okay i did a show in iceland um with like an iceland improv festival with like a group of really good friends so it was really fun because we were just like hanging out with good friends but it was also like one of the best shows I've ever done. It was super fun. The audience was like super warm to us. They like loved it. And what was also really satisfying was like, it was like an improv festival. So like you were like 
going to parties and like meeting people beforehand and like the Icelandic people and like a lot of the other comedians like what had nothing to do with us mm. we had this killer show and then suddenly everybody was all over us and we were like alright we're getting like Icelandic hot dogs we're not hanging out at these parties anymore <laughs> but I there's like something that. very satisfying about like oh, yeah. having a killer show and all these people who were like kind of saying shitty things to us and like being like sort of openly rude suddenly being like wait where are you going will you hang out it was like yeah. really fun <laughs> oh yeah there's nothing better than when yeah. you prove, prove people wrong who do judge you coming in I <laughs> yes. love that. Oh, I love it. Yes, yeah, like, there was one person. I'm just going to like shit on somebody now, but there was one person who like was at because I we, we were performers at the Magnet Theater which is a theater in New York but there was like another performer who we like sort of knew who was at the Magnet Theater who was like at the show and for some reason he thought our team got cut because it was like with an improv team you get like renewed after six months or you get cut and we got renewed but he thought we got cut so he was like oh is this y'all's farewell tour and we're like no we got renewed and then we had like a killer show and then he was like oh you should coach our team <laughs> and it was very satisfying that's fun see that's why I also don't want to get and to improv because it seems like it's got kind of like the like sassiness of of like the behind the back stuff that we have but also mm. it's like you seem frail i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> i know improv does have like this weird attitude of like everyone's welcome like we're here for everyone but also like i'll cut your fucking throat if you like get on a team and i don't you know what yeah, i mean absolutely yeah no, but I mean, I talk a lot of trash because that's just natural as a stand up. That's our yes. job to talk. And trash. I because you're also the only not form lower it. than us. It's <laughs> like clowning, you know, I know. And honestly, if I could take a clowning class right now, I would. Clowning seems so fun. <laughs> clowning is great. Yeah. But, clowning, yeah. rhyming, improv, the only forms that the stand up is like the base and you guys are the underground. Uh, and- right. <laughs> <laughs> the thing also with improv, like, again, I love improv. I've done it for, like, eight years. I owe so much of my life to, like, the things I've learned through improv. But also, like, if you do bad improv, it's truly, like, the most embarrassing thing you've ever done. It's and also sometimes worst. even with good improv, like, sometimes I'll think about, like, if a stranger who didn't know what anything was just walked in on this happening right now, they would be like, what the fuck is going on? Because it's mm-hmm. it just it's a bunch of adults playing pretend, you know? Yeah. No, bad improv is one of the worst things you could ever see in your life. <laughs> Mediocre improv is right next to a good improv. I is think... also kind of still bad. But then <laughs> great improv is one of the most magical things you can ever see. I Look, I agree. As someone who's done all the improv in that whole scale, yes. Although I would say I would probably put mediocre improv below bad improv because sometimes I think bad improv is like, well, this is at least entertaining. Whereas mediocre mm-hmm. improv is just like, all right, you're doing the thing I've seen a million times before. Like I love being, like I think now that I've done improv a bunch, I've like taken classes or I've done stuff with like people who are just starting and there's always that thing with like a person doing improv where it's like, oh, you're really bad. And like everyone's looking at their feet and doesn't want to do it with you. And I'm like, I love doing it with those people because they always do something like really wild and unexpected. And I think that's fun, especially if you've done it for a while. It's fun to get somebody who's like, damn, you're like a real wild card. <laughs> like, get I love Michael this. Scott <laughs> pulling out a gun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But also, I mean, some of my favorite people have improv backgrounds and they're so freaking like they're like just intimidating it's really funny because it gives yeah. you such a sharp mind and a um, background of the rules of comedy. And I tried to learn. A, I've done a small amount of improv. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always terrifying to me. But Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I like to prepare. I like to know what yeah. I'm doing, you know. I think for me, I like being lazy. And I think I've done enough improv now. It's like nice. It really, I think this is like one of the best skills I've got from improv is like, I feel like I like am not afraid to just like do something. If someone is like, hey, go do that thing. I'm just like, okay, I'll do it. And I don't necessarily worry about like looking stupid. Cause I'm like, whatever, I'll figure it out. I also think I learned with improv that like, if you are confident about anything, like you'll be fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. for the most part, but. Yeah, no, those are two great lessons in life. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Okay, got a couple last questions and then okay. we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, what show would you want to write for if you if if it was your dream? What show would you would you be mm. writing for? I would love to write for At Home with Amy Sedaris. I think Amy Sedaris, I think she's a genius. I think she's so funny. And I think that that show is like very much my sense of humor where it's just like goofy and kind of stupid and campy in a way I really like. 
But yeah, Love I it. think that's my show. That's my She's pick. Great. Love it. Classic yeah. Strangers with Candy. Love, uh, it. love it. Jerry Blank, my hero. Mm-hmm. Okay. And last but not least, even though you just kind of gave us little pieces of advice, <laughs> I want to ask you for, for something maybe that's helped you recently. Some mm. a little piece of advice you carry with you or you've been thinking about that could help our getting better community to get better. I think my advice and something that like it took me a while to learn this but I think it's been so valuable once I did is to just like do the thing you want to do like I feel like it sounds a little obvious or a little condescending but I feel like for so much of like the stuff I've wanted to do I've like hemmed and hawed on it or I've been like I don't know or I don't feel ready but I think just like doing the thing before you feel ready and like being like well I'm just going to do it. Like I, you know, I wrote a web series last year and it was like a thing that I was just like, well, I'm just going to like do this thing and it's not going to be perfect. And it wasn't perfect, but I like learned so much from doing it that I think like if you want to do something, just like go out and do it today and like get started on it and make a plan and make a schedule and like put pen to paper and go do it. Um, And I think it, it won't be perfect and it probably won't be the exact thing you imagined or like whatever your dream was, but like it'll probably be like a great learning experience. And it'll be a stepping stone to the next thing you do. That's absolutely my it gets advice, you closer least. no matter what you do. That's what I always, you know, I get sometimes people reach out to me and they like, oh, I'm thinking about doing stand up comedy. What's your advice? And then I'm always kind of like, hey, I've been doing comedy for like 14, 15 years now. You should probably <laughs> maybe ask somebody that's been doing it for one to two years to get <laughs> right. more in that range of what to expect. <laughs> but in general, my advice is just get out there and do it because no matter what, no matter how good you are, it's a long road. So yeah, for sure. you might as well just get started. So you're on that road. The worst thing you can do is continue to delay that journey, you know? So I, I agree with that. And just like the best thing you can do is just get started and learn as you go because nobody biggest lesson i've learned the more people i meet nobody knows what they're doing you know yeah for sure yeah i think that was also like an important lesson for me is like yeah i think nobody knows what they're doing and i think if you work with like smart cool people like they can help you out you know like tap your friends and see what they know and see if they can help you do the thing you want to do you know absolutely i agree but you got to be in a good circle of friends to make this that is happen also true <laughs> yeah, but you have a bunch of toxic relationships hanging out with <laughs> bad people guys find yourself a paul he'll teach you about turkey cutlets everybody needs a paul in their life i agree <laughs> yeah, i mean i really appreciate you coming on the podcast i like looking at all your stuff in the background your vegetables <laughs> and all your and your, and your skyscrapers mm-hmm. and whatnot <laughs> I, I just appreciate you as a friend. You're a good person. When I, when I came in and did the show and I invited you to my show, you came. And I, so many <laughs> times people don't. So really? Yeah. You oh, keep no. surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. This is very fun. I want to shout out the one person on Twitter who requested me. It was because of them we made this all happen. See, they followed their dreams and they put put it on their vision board on Twitter and they made it happen. So and thank you to you them. Are. Here I am. <laughs> and then look forward and enjoy your work for people. Tell people where they can find you. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you can see some of my work at giantbomb.com. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, uh, my name is Abby Russell. You can find me there or at Y-B-B-A-A-A-B-B-Y. Um, I'm also on Twitch and Instagram with the same handle. Absolutely. I look forward to you writing with Amy Sedaris. I look <laughs> forward to you continue working in video games and, and to when your, uh, when your butt refuses to quit. We all- <laughs> Thank uh, you so much. I look forward to all of these things, too. And I will be sure to keep you updated on every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming, Abby. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed that episode, you might want to look at our last episode located right here. And perhaps you want a special episode picked just for you by our overlords at YouTube. Right there. And do not forget to subscribe. Beep, 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 beep.